Hello, what is up, gentlemen? Uh, here today with the newest episode of Teen Air Combos right here. I am your host, Flying High, says so Zones 4, with Jaco Man, the co-host. Hey, what is up, guys? It's Shaco Man, a.k.a. Shaco Mania, and the house for today, y'all. Good to be back. Yep, and uh, today's guests are T.A. Wolf and Psycho Blue. What is up, everybody? It's me, Psycho Blue, conduct the high trade, Mr. Hype Gems, hashtag Crosswires, hashtag Marvel Infinite, and friends. We're talking about a lot of games today. Yep. Yeah, that's right, uh, man. Yep. Right now, T.A. Wolf is not with us at the moment, but most likely he's going to be joining us like partly through. But yeah, today's uh, team area combos with it is all about Evil 2019. Uh, Evil 2019 uh, is basically the biggest fighting game tournament in the world, and recently this is the the, new, the most recent one that happened last weekend, and it was hype as hell. So let's uh, go in and talk about it right there. Uh, Evo 2019 right there had a lot of like uh, popular games. Obviously there was nine like played games in there, which were Street Fighter V, Dragon Ball Fighters, Ultimate Smash Butter, like Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Soul Calibur 6, World of Cap like 11, Tekken 7, and we also had Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, Samurai Showdown, and let's say it's I'm trying to remember the other one. I believe there's one more. Yeah. Oh, you said Street. Let's see. You said Street Fighter. Street Fighter. You Dragon said uh, uh, Samurai Showdown. More gonna be eleven. Yeah, 11. MK11. Yeah, okay. Well, so, Calibur 6, Tekken 7. Oh, Under Night in Birth. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Under Night, yeah, yeah. 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 Under Night in Birth right there. Yeah, basically, but those are all the games that got played right there. And basically, it had a very good turnout right there. With obviously, the, the most popular game that was entered right there was Smash Brothers Ultimate. But with Street Fighter, Street Fighter 5, and also, met, also um, Tekken 7 right there weren't that far behind. It was... I, Pretty freaking enjoyable tournament I say watch right there. There was a lot of freaking good times and everything that we really enjoyed it right there. So let's go right in and talk about um the various the various uh by tournaments right there. We were talking Woo! about yeah, we were... Evo yep. Evo twenty nineteen had a lot of stories, not just uh when it came to like who was playing who, but more like uh Oh man, we well we could talk about who's touching who, but uh, let's uh break it down game by game. Where do you want to start? Uh, let's talk about uh, Dragon Ball Fighters first. All right, this one actually didn't really have uh too much uh, unpleasantness. I mean, the tournament seemed really good. Um, the grand finals um very much a very much a sporting event. Lots of sportsmanship here. Two guys who face each other all the time. Coincidentally, two guys who uh, seem to kind of rattle the nerves of other players across other games. I mean, Goichi was known to be like the king of Kusoge and Sonic Fox really only did stuff in uh um the games no one else really uh pay attention to like Mortal Kombat's typically not looked at very competitively most of the time um prior to Sonic Fox Rise Dragon Ball Fighters and of course Dead or Alive uh, Sonic Fox simply does very well there. His brother actually is a Dead or Alive champion at one point. I think he won the uh Dead or Alive World Championships a few years ago. Yeah, um I know so about that. So well, his uh, so he comes from a family of competitors and smack talking, and of course he also has the whole uh, sports mascot thing going for him. Um, he'd really have uh, his threads on during this finals though, because Goichi is something you have to kind of like really be careful about. And the game came right down the wire. We got to see all the uh, the madness of Fighter Z that we've come to know the game for, for better or worse. And at the end, they shook hands. Um, they gave each other a big hug. Good times all around. That's a good part of the FGC we like to see. Uh, the sportsmanship, not so much like the uh, the fake drama or the feuds. I mean, if it's wrestling, you got to remember someone else's scripted to lose, you know? So it's good to see mm -hmm. just like a, a good gentleman's fight right there. Yeah, so uh, let's still talk about all the results real quick for, for right there. Let's talk about it. Uh, obviously, the brand, the winner for Evil 2019 for Dragon Ball Fighters was Goichi. Uh, second place was Sonic Fox. First, third was Finn Ritz. Fourth was Sanks. Fifth was Hero Hero. Uh, like tied for fifth was B. That was his like, name right there. Time for seventh is Chris G. And then time for seventh is Kazunoko. And then mm -hmm. oh, some other players. Top 16 uh, was Apology Man, Kalmart, The Kill Sades, Matoy, Jugura, Wawa, 
Scott Vermillion and BNBBN. And obviously there's also been more like more players too right there. Obviously there's Summer Tech Sabres, Theo, Kana, like No Kami, Hook Dang God, uh, Kuro VR, Nakasa, Kimoto, Super Noon, Coast Steve, Lord Knight. Basically a lot of freaking other players is too that actually came out and tried their best right there for it right there. And it was a very good tournament to watch right there. Obviously, there was in the meta in this game right there had a lot of Bardogs, had a lot of GT Goku's and everything like that. But that didn't like uh, let the hype get killed by it. Obviously, you saw the characters like that right there, but you also saw all the characters with those characters too. That you know we don't mm-hmm. see because we had a Android seventeen in in uh. Top eight for Dragon Ball Fighters, and answer seventeen is considered one of the lowest tier characters in the game because of that. Well, actually, I don't think he's considered one of the worst characters nowadays. He is considered low tier, but not one of the worst. Okay, and then that's really it's the same. I didn't saw that match. I uh, only saw like Grand Finals for DBZ for top eight. Yep. Uh, other things, we also have two Ting Gohans in top eight too, which is Fritz G and Hero. And uh, Ting Gohan was a character that has been rising up the tier list a bit because he's been like actually uh, people find out that he's actually pretty good nowadays. Uh, other things is that obviously, um, let's see, we have Saints with Android 18. Android 18 is probably one of the better characters in the thing. Obviously, C has problems. That's because C doesn't have the tools that the top tier has. But C is very scary, okay wise And C mm-hmm. has some very good tools that basically prevents people from doing stuff that they're not used to playing her. And it's like, you know, playing against her and everything like that. So, let's see. We had... Looks like there is one, two, three... There was three Bardocks. There's one, two... Two Kid Gokus, um, no, three Kid Gokus. There is three Yamsas, one looks like. There is two regular Gokus, three, uh, two regular Boos right there, two adult Gohans, and then we had one Cell, one Vegeta, one, uh, let's see, and yeah, and basically, like, basically, the the only character that had like different right there was Benritz mainly, with using two characters that weren't uh, used by anyone else in the top eight, which is Cell and Vegeta. Oh, so any? Yeah. So oh, any of? Uh, all right. So one, any Frieza's, two, any Ginyu's in that top eight? Nope, there were not right there. Basically, there is only like a couple of G- uh, Frieza players. In with that actually play at a high level, one disappointing. Is, actually, <laughs> basically, there's only like two, like uh, two, like one, two players that actually play um, Frieza at a high level. One is Alucard from New York. The other one is Tatsukawa. Uh, basically, those are the only two players that do it. And for Ginyu, there's only around. There is a lot of Japanese players that play Ginyu. And, but there's only a few players that actually play, um, like, uh, Bardock, not Bardock, I mean, Ginyu and, um, U.S. with that at a high level. And I think the only player right now that I know of that plays Ginyu at a high level is, uh, Tats, uh, Tatsuro, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, I'm f- fucking up his name right there, but he, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tats, Tatsukiro. I'm fucking up his name right there, so, yeah, but basically he is, like, the one I know that plays, uh, like, uh, Ginyu at a high level at the moment, but he also plays other things. Um, basically, this is the most, this is the most unique character probably got, getting out of was Base Goku. Base Goku, uh, actually, is probably the highest, like, one right there that's actually considered, basically, he was considered weak, very weak, until, um, until Wow like, a couple weeks ago, so that he has he has power, and he actually beat freaking um, he actually beat um, I think like Kaz and Uncle or, or Doichi, uh, like or like he was actually doing well against them. He's actually was pretty he's actually pretty good right there. So basically, 
there's a lot of freaking things that I should talk about right there. Like we he even had a Vegeta, a blue Vegeta right there make top twenty five in like in the tournament right there, which is actually really freaking good because the uh, like the Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta right there is considered one of the worst characters in the game. That's because he has not like everything else like the other characters have. Like he's like, he does have a good assist right there. He has like very like like weird normals right there and everything like that. He's a lot of things right there. So um, let's uh, go to the next part about it, and let's talk about the Sonic Bots versus Goichi sets that happen at Evo. Because this right here is probably like the most hyped thing about Dragon Ball Fighters because of that set. People like. It was a very down to the wire set once the time right there that people would not wouldn't know who was actually gonna win because it was so neck and neck right there and each one was playing at a so high level that no one actually would no one knows who was actually gonna win. Um, uh, like so, uh, basically before this right here, I saw that Sonic Fox uh, tweeted out that he was like he made this team to basically counter Goichi's play style how or, or basically able to open up Goichi because how like like everyone knows Goichi's defense right there is like a next level type thing that he is able to block things that no one should block because how good his defense is and basically he uh, uses that team to like design to actually open him up and everything like that um so yeah, so this thing right there was such a hype ass set that I like one percent believe that like nothing is gonna really top nothing else top that set really at all besides maybe a couple of Tekken matches that get got near it. But I still believe it's one percent the hands down the best like maps of the like of the year for Dragon Ball Fighters hands down. Um, so what do you get? What do you guys believe with the set too? What do you guys think of the set? Um, I watch clips, but like I said, what I really liked about the set was uh just the respect uh, between the players and uh, tensions get very high, and the FGC loves to create these crazy storylines, especially when it involves Sonic Fox. But there was really nothing to really uh complain about or uh go uh go ape over i mean they played a really hard set um the game right down the wire and in the end one guy came, overcame the other maybe next time will be different they shook hands they gave each other a big old hug i mean what's there not to like i loved it yeah like same here i love it too right there that when, same here man yeah white ones like uh goichi one right there you can saw that he was overcoming the motion right there he was so he probably probably was so mentally exhausted right there. He was having trouble trying to remove his glasses because he couldn't believe he actually finally won. Because uh, mm -hmm. because last year basically Goichi lost to uh, Sonic Fox in top in top eight right there. Like it was the same final as last year, except for um like it was uh like Sonic Fox that was in winners and Goichi was in losers, and basically Sonic Fox just outplayed them like last year. Then as in this thing right there shows how close they are in in the in their level of how good they are. It shows how close right there that really it could be a, most of the time right there it could be just a coin flip who wins sometimes nowadays. But it shows that any time that this they actually play each other, people will watch them right there because how amazing the set was. So, so yeah. Um, next, let's talk about uh, the reveal for Dragon Ball Fighters that happened at EVO. Uh, basically, like everyone, everyone probably already knows this right here. Uh, basically, there was two characters that got revealed for Dragon Ball Fighters. One was the member, which was leaked a while ago because of the Xbox stage actually at least falling about that. And then a Nintendo leak right there that, that basically confirmed that he was actually, he was actually coming. And then it was a uh, Super Saiyan Blue Gotega that was always known before. They actually showed a trailer for him that basically is most likely he's not 100% complete yet. Obviously, they have bug testing for him still. But it shows that the, the character, that character is fucking hype as hell still. And people are really, 
hyping hyping them up like they went into Pram. Uh, so it's go like um, uh, Zanabba's trailer was freaking hype as fuck because he looks like a character that he was out of like no one expected him how he was actually gonna play and he looked amazing in that trailer like the because of the moves and everything like that and some of those moves like that actually look freaking awesome right there and he is a interesting character because I actually he actually got released a uh, couple about three or four days ago and he's actually a pretty interesting character he has like a lot of interesting tools obviously he has faults right there he has no I and not a he doesn't have a low to the cause and lights he had he's a big character right there so he would get fuzzy right there but he has like other good tools right there for it he has um some amazing okay right there I, like his level three allows him to get a crazy freaking like okay mix up right there that the opponent has to take right there because he's like plus like 44 off of setup right there but it's, it's crazy right there like off of landing level three and um he has amazing lockdown tools right there and he has some he has some pretty like like useful tools you want to know obviously i have to um like try them out some more and everything like that to see what uh what he actually does right there and also people have to discover more things about him but uh we will find out soon enough if he actually is um if he actually is good right there, or if it's okay, or he's actually bad, because people like like thought at first when he wasn't even out yet right there that people thought he was terrible, because like people like because his assist was bad right there, and people thought thinking that assist equal assist bad equals bad character, and he is not a bad character definitely at the moment, but uh, we will find out soon enough if he's actually bad or not, but he has good normals right there. He doesn't have, but he doesn't have a good 2 H like that. His 2 H hits very high up, but he has like no freaking hold, like horizontal range on it. He has very good, a lot of good other tools like that for too. And so yeah, I can't, I can't wait to actually see him. Obviously, we uh, for um, Gotega, we don't know much about him yet because you know he did. We don't so he we only saw really his special moves for him. But it looks like they're trying to replicate the look and feel of the Broly version movie, the super movie version him a lot because there's a lot of animation, like uh, techniques that they like took from that right there and try to like replicate as much as possible in Dragon Ball Fighters. So there's obviously the, obviously the freaking um, the smear frames for it right there look pretty amazing right there and they actually try to copy. The, like his command man wave down to the exact look right there and try to replicate it as best they can and it was hype as hell because it was that and also people like we will 100% freaking want to see it there for it obviously we need to see if he's actually going to be good but obviously he might be at least T obviously I don't know why I'm saying good right there he's not even freaking with, like even near completion yet so I don't know why I'm trying to say that at the moment <laughs> Yeah, but I am definitely hyped to actually see um, this character in a legitimate setting right there and see how good it is. So, I, get, I just can't wait. Um, so, yeah. So, that's what I thought about the reveals and the characters. Do you have anything else to add, guys? Um, I think... I don't know how to describe it. So, yeah, he does look pretty... Oh, you're, I mean, Gogeta. I thought I was going nuts. You were saying, like... Gortega was like, who's that? That was from Slam Masters. Um, yeah, uh, Gogeta... I don't know what he'll necessarily have different from Vegito other than, uh, the Soul Punisher, which we did see him use against Janemba in the trailer. Um, at the same time, I don't know, um, like, what else he could do. I'm sure they're gonna have, uh, the Big Bang Kamehameha as well as the Soul Punisher. But in terms of, like, uh, how he'll fight, um, I suppose we'll have to see more trailers since uh, those general journals don't really tell you anything uh, play style wise until they actually come out. They have to kind of figure out yourself. I mean, we just see, like, a few auto combos and uh, some special attacks. That's about it. Mm -hmm. That is true right there. Um, so, yeah. Basically, that's uh, probably what we think about Dragon Ball Fighters at the moment right there. So, yeah. 
Um, next, let's go over to the next game, which is Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, and what you think about that. Um, uh, basic Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle is basically a two v two versus fighting game where you pick two characters, the fighting against two other characters from different series made by Arc System Works or games related to that, or basic two D anime fighters. One is basically uh, obviously the Blaze Blue series. The other one is um, the other series is um, Under Night in Birth, and then we have Ruby, and then we have uh, what was that one right there? Ruby and also uh, Persona Four, Persona Four Arena. Those are the four main series that are focused in this game. But obviously, we finally like have gotten another ser another like fate in it, which is another universe, which is Arcana Heart, and then they reveal then. They had more characters that I was to talk about with that. Uh, basically, the tournament was actually pretty fun right there. Obviously, it's a very high place game right there that basically had a lot of like a lot of freaking like very powerful things right there for it. And obviously, it's a game that basically goes very fast for it and had a lot of freaking um, it basically a lot of games and so fast in this game right there for it. But I think the game, the tournament was actually uh, pretty good right there. Obviously, not amazing everything for it. But it's actually a pretty hype. Obviously, I like the the main winner of the tournament right there was a UX player, which was amazing, and he what played um the like Ruby team of like Yang and um Yang and Ruby, which won he won the won the tournament with that team right there, which is actually pretty cool because obviously people he loves the freaking characters much right there and people really love what Ruby because of its pop and everything um obviously i've watched it right there and like it was a very good set for what i've seen and uh i definitely did enjoy it right there obviously i'm not like uh i haven't watched a ton of high level stuff for it right there because i've been running focusing on dragon ball fighters but i've been watching here and there for um for cross tide battles tournaments right there, but I definitely did enjoy the set right there. Uh, I was right there, basically with this game right there, it's basically all about momentum right there. Like a lot of fighting games, basically if you get the hit right there, you basically, basically most likely have a high chance of winning right there for it. Um, I definitely did enjoy it right there. Um, let's say, so there was a, the did reveal basically full stuff right there, what's they also was another thing right there. The thing, the trailer for the game did get leaked a couple hours before the tournament started right there, which always is a downer. It basically had three, or uh, four new characters. Two, uh, one was a new character from uh, Second Shushu right there, which is basically a an anime like um an anime action game right there that basically had uh, some. Big like big uh, like big t td anime girls. That there's is. a uh there's like a really weird dating sim spin off of it too. Like I remember seeing a commercial for like a year or so ago, where you have like that Mickey Mouse pointer hand. You know what I'm talking about. And one you're like patting down a girl's leg, like patting down like her inner thigh, like the whole smacking sound, pat pat pat. And she's like saying it's comfortable or something like that. So weird. Yeah. But uh, to be fair, it's Blaze Blue, and Blaze not exactly made by the same person. So, uh, go figure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, enough about that. How about uh, the background noise of Blaze Blue Cross Tag at Evo? Okay. So, during That's the okay. tournament... But we, we didn't finish someone... talking about the reveals yet. <laughs> I gotcha. Let me know when it's time. I want to talk about this, that one too. Yeah, so but uh, yeah, we also got Gun Tank, not the or the uh, Blitz Tank is the guy's name. Yeah. So basically, uh, what got me built with them was um, obviously the like like the new character from from the from the Kenken series series, and then we have two characters from the Unsplendid uh, Blitzkopf like anime fighting game series. <laughs> Says I, but I, I know if I messed up that game right there. Which was a fight. It's a two. It's a two D dozen a dozen fighting game right there. Was it played similar to the Third Strike for one or no? Because I actually tried it out after the game got announced. And it has accuracy, like like accuracy, 
the fuck, I can't remember. Akatsuki. 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 Yeah. I, I can't see Blitzenkopf, but that's actually the name of the fighting game. I, I can't. Akatsuki, uh, basically, is a, like one of the popular characters out there. He made up. He is a, a guest character and also honor in birth. So basically, technically, he is an Under Night in Birth character too, that also appeared in it. And then we have Blitz Tank, Blitz Tank, which is probably <laughs> the most, like, most, like, unique character in a fighting game that probably no one has expect. Basically, Blitz Tank right there, obviously, is a tank. He is a literal tank that basically moves around and basically just, like, suits beams right there at you right there and runs you over and does everything like that. Basically, he is a meme fighting game character because he is literally like because no like he's like the most unique fighting game character ever been made for a fighting game and he is like but the more probably the most like hyped character just because they like, don't want to spread that for like, him that has to be a playable character at all and it's like everyone's enjoyed for it right there and i'm 100 playing him when it comes out and then I am one of that, and then they actually revealed a new a new Ruby character, which is Neapolitan, which I don't know anything about Ruby at all, so I don't know like what she does with that. I know she fights with an umbrella, but I don't know anything else about that at all. So that is basically what got revealed at the thing at the moment. So what? Oh, so what? So what happened? Uh, uh, um, what happened at? Oh yeah, basically another thing that happened like during the tournament right there was, um, one of the setups right there. Or I think one of the main setups of the game right there, uh, guy like someone who was playing like a Blaze of Crossback Battle lost a set and he got so, so mad at losing that set right there he. Deleted the game off the PlayStation <laughs> 4, <laughs> and basically because caused the tournaments back to slow, like basically get put on the back, not the back for a bit, but basically hold the tournament a bit because the he literally deleted one of the setups off the thing right there because there was no game on there, and it was literally freaking like a big thing on it because like who freaking deletes the setup at a tournament right that does for goes who lost the game so there's two kind of players who do it or sorry three kinds smash players mortal Kombat players and anime players depending on the order it could really fluctuate who's the most common to do it but uh i see all kinds of salt and just stewing in things in tournament especially one like that uh, whether it be ego, you thought you'd do better. Same time, it is a world tournament. You never know who you're going to run into. I mean, I'm surprised I do well sometimes when I do play, um, no matter where I am, because I know the FGC is not as small as it once was. The world is vast, and you never know who you're going to run into. Um, but in that order, like, I'm surprised it took someone this long. to. I mean, I've seen chairs being thrown. I've seen sticks being thrown. Um, I've seen consoles thrown across the room. Uh, one time I pounded my fist on the table when I lost like six years ago, and I pounded the fist so hard that the disc inside the system got scratched up. I had to pay, well, I chose to pay for a new disc, so there's no hard feelings, but you'd be surprised uh, how high tensions get. I'm surprised uh, TOs let him do that. Like, and not like tell him, hey, what are you doing? And just kind of like coerce him or whatever. Because, uh, I mean, this is Evo, and there's a lot of really thick security there. So I'm surprised he let him even get that far, knowing what he was about to do. Because you have to hold down the home button. You have to go to uh, the menu. You have to go to the game. You have to go to delete. You have to say, do you want to do it? Yes. There's so many things. People could have said, hey, what are you doing? And then, like, uh, get in his face or block his view or whatever. So it's actually right there. You can actually do the game so freaking fast because basically what this that's what you have to do is just hit the home menu, go over to the game, hit start, and then just like delete the game. But then you can actually do it in less than like freaking 15 seconds right there. Yeah, but the thing is, 15 seconds is forever if you have all these guards and tournament runners watching over that's sets easy. and stuff because that's yeah. what they're there for. Says, so well, one, one thing right there, no one's going to be expecting for someone to be leading the game off the thing right there. People obviously are going to expect them if someone's going to steal something right there, but if they're actually trying to mess with the, you know, if they actually are, like, like controlling the places before, that's what they're normally supposed to do. And so, basically, like, 
no one's going to expect them to actually, to actually like, you know, do something like that. So Well, because... th you say delete it on one of like the main setups, so there had to be a tournament runner watching the results and stuff to make sure there was no foul play or uh, bad reporting. I mean, you know, a situation like when uh, people said Wolfcrone did something he didn't, so I'm assuming they were watching at least him, because he said it takes 15 seconds, but it takes us like maybe two seconds to see, hey, what's this guy doing? Why is he taking so long to get off? And then you see what he's doing. You say, hey, what are you doing? And that's like seven or eight seconds. And then you have to go in and press the delete and find that thing before the TO said, hey, you need to get off right now. We're going to call security and carry you out or whatever. So I don't know who was running it or like who was paying attention to that, that pool, but they really got to shape up because that happens all the time. I won't say it happens all the time, but the possibility of hardware being damaged or – Software being misaligned like that um, is very common and very high, especially in tournaments like that, especially like the scenes li like that. I mean, because anime has a lot of the anime con crowds, and we all meme about uh, the, the weebs and the neckbeards and stuff. So, yeah, just be careful next time whoever's uh, running a tournament. I'm not saying that to be mean to the Arxis crowd and stuff, but it's a fighting game tournament, and unfortunately, tensions run high. Mm hmm yeah, there's like really freaking thing, but obviously it does happen right there because obviously it happened at the tournament right there, and people freaking like by saw that right there, they couldn't do anything about it, but it happens right there. But there's like there's been worse things that happen at Evo, which we will get to later. So, <laughs> so yeah, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is um Tekken Seven. Tekken Seven right there had some pretty freaking awesome moments for it right there. Uh. Tekken is basically, you know, Tekken right there. Um, so it has some pretty freaking hype things right there with basic, some highest level of Tekken we probably saw all year. And it won, and it, the person won was probably a person that had no one expect to actually win, which was Arson Ash, which is a player from, I believe... Uh, Pakistan. Pakistan. Yeah, Pakistan. Yeah, and he is a uh, a, a Kazumi main, which is a uh, character that is in the lore of in the lore of um, Tekken Seven. Right there, he sees the father of uh, Kazuya, I believe. I mean, no, the son, the mother yep. of Kazuya. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's the mom of Kazuya and mom. the uh, wife of Heihachi. Yeah, so ba and basically, it's like he's known for that. Uh, basically, the the tournament results right there is actually awesome. The ass. Me, Atakin, uh, Take, Nobi, Konoma, Lohai, and Churian. Which uh, some of the players, some of the some of the freaking like other players that nobody make it in top eight right there, like JCD, uh, JCR, um, Saint right there, and um, Kudans right there. Uh, like obviously if like, did not make it to top eight at all, which is crazy for them. That is actually definitely like crazy that they didn't make top eight right there because some of those other, some of those other players are considered some of the best characters and the, some of the best players at Tekken right there and the only but like, the only two players that actually got up there like you know with that are known to be very good right there are low high and me right there and um, also Attican Attican right there is considered probably one of the best US players too nowadays and all these other players is you know, like no one really know. No one, like, probably, I don't really know them that well, but because I don't play Tekken, so obviously I, they might be, like, a well-known players in the Tekken community, but I do not know uh, how good they are, if, like, because of that. Uh, basically, um, Tekken, like, basically the character uses for uh, the Tekken 7 top, uh, top 8 were Ashan using Azumi and Geese, me using Steve, Paul, Kazuya, Geese, and Devil Jin, Anakin using Jack 7, Take using Kazumi, Nobi using Steve and Dragon Off, Nobi using Steve, Jack Seven and Dragon Off, Lohai using Law, and Turrigan using Geese. So I find it funny how much Tekken players, especially newer ones, talk about how you can play anyone and win in Tekken when everyone has like their counter picks and stuff in that game. So keep in mind, I came from Tekken Dark Resurrection. That was like the first game I played competitively, and I knew that you had to have like, like a stable of people to really keep up because some matchups. 
are just complete pain in the butt and you're better off just uh, picking someone else. Not so much top tier, mind you, but just having a, uh, a counter of certain tools other characters have, which is why you see so much variety among like one player in Tekken because you need those options because so many things can happen in that game and you can die just from walking backwards or standing up out of turn, or if you get hit in the corner um, at the wrong angle, that's pretty much your round because um, some walls are just like complete hexagons of death. So I find it interesting that uh, we have um, that top of like so much variety, not so much between players, but within the player himself, he's playing like three or four characters. I mean, me, I expect him. Mean, he's been playing a long time. He was one of the first YouTubers I ever watched when I was playing Dark Resurrection um, in college. Um, and YouTube had just got uploaded fresh, um, wasn't like full on Google yet. Um, and his videos with uh, QDance, one of the first I've ever watched, like on YouTube, period. So I know what he's about. Um, I've heard Arslan's Ash name um, mentioned a few times. Um, I believe in previous games, the name does ring a bell. Um, the Middle East has always had like a very strong Tekken scene, more so than uh, 2D games have. I remember when I first joined Tekken Saibatsu. Um, I remember seeing a lot of players from Saudi Arabia, from Dubai. Um, there were a couple in Israel. That was like their big thing, Tekken, um, back in the Tekken 5 days. So it was cool to see someone from that area really get that kind of exposure and show the world that uh, the whole world's been playing Tekken because that game still got new updates and stuff, even when Street Fighter was like in hibernation for 10 years. So I'm glad that uh, the game's getting a little bit more... Uh, eyeballs on it i just hope uh, people realize that um there is going to be some silliness to it um and when you make statements um such as the ones that are made about like the character variety just know that sometimes just sticking to one character can be very bad for you just based on the way uh the game works like some characters for example like jack is great like keeping people out because of like how long his limbs are um other characters um he doesn't have as easy of a time with so you have to kind of have like a backup plan in many cases, like I play uh, Jack, I play Jack and Marduk a lot. I do like big guys. Unfortunately, there's no Wong Jin Ray, but maybe this new guy who was revealed at the weekend might fill that void. If you would be so kind to explain uh, the new face of Tekken himself, Eroy Smith. So yeah, let's talk about the two uh, the new reveals for Tekken Seven. Uh, there was two new characters. Well, there was two new reveals that happened right there. One was uh, like a returning character from Tekken Six and Tekken Tag Tournament Two, which I actually forgot her name. So give me one second. Zafina. <laughs> so again, Zafina, that basically is a very interesting type of character that uses a lot of weird movements right there. It plays uh, a lot like. Um, Okay. Voldo. Voldo. And, uh, she, she's straight. She is straight up Voldo with a vagina. Like that. That's really who she is. Like she has the crawling, um, the evasive movements between different stances and stuff. And uh, she got some new tricks in Tekken Seven for the looks of it. She has uh the Azazel install now, which is actually really cool. The boss of Tekken Six seems to have something to do with her now because she has a lot of the uh, the claw stuff. And we'll see um how that goes to effect when uh she drops. Yes. And then we have Leroy Smith. Leroy there Smith. we go. Yep. Leo Swiftworth is a new original character for the Tekken universe. That basically is a old Kung Fu master right there that basically has been practicing for years and basically is a master of a think I don't know who he's master right there. I forgot I forgot who he was master for. And he is a legitimate badass that is a old black dude and he looks legitimately like freaking awesome right there. And he literally just beats your ass right there, and he looks like probably one of the chillest freaking dudes that will beat your fucking ass. <laughs> I thought it was Raven at first. Like, I know Master Raven told him, go get good. I thought that was uh, Raven saying, well, now I'm good. And he's like an old man now. His hair is all gray and stuff. I thought it was Raven because, like, the sunglasses. Um, oh, yeah, but, that's true. Yeah. But I'm hoping that uh, he has a lot of Wong Jin rays because that was, again, one of my main guys. Um, when I play Tekken actively, I really had like a successor for him, like other characters. Um, this guy might be it. If not, he had to get new style, um, the Wing Chun style, like Ip Man, which Wong Chin Ray could definitely do if he wanted to, just given what his style was back in the day. So we'll see 
what uh, Mr. Leroy has in store. I'm kind of excited to see what players uh, come up with him or come up for him as well because he'll definitely have some eyeballs on just by the fact that he is, after all, the grandpa from the Boondocks made to a Tekken character um, with the badass factor turned up. <laughs> yep, that is 100% true right there. Can't, w can't wait to try him out. Um, yeah, uh, basically, for Tekken right there, there wasn't really uh, any leaks like, for the roster at all. But there was something else right there that Rage C, like, was a very, like, um, very unfortunate thing for EVO because of what they did. Basically, uh, during one of the downtime during the Masters right there, there was a <laughs> thing for the audience at the EVO right there, not something that sold out street. It was actually for the audience at EVO right there that basically had a little uh, Kodak thing for Metal Gear Solid right there with Hara talking to Snake and Snake saying... Man, that was some good ass Tekken right there. I yeah. saw that live, dude. I was like, hey, yeah. I was in the arena too when that happened. I'm like, wait, yeah. Snake and Tekken? What's going on? Yeah. So, unfortunately, it's looking not likely. It's um, the not, actor did. The actor did not take that uh, very well. The actor said, "Um, how dare you use my lights without permission? This was just like a quick cameo for you, not for public use. Use for public use of tournament." Next time, I'm going to sue the crap out of you. Um, Konami seems very unhappy as well. Not that I blame them. So, Harada seems unhappy um, because, again, that's all kinds of legal copyrights on his head he has to answer for. Um, mm -hmm. And tell uh, his bosses, hey, why did this happen? This is like bad vibrations. You have to say what's going on, say you didn't know, and things like that. So, in a weekend of a lot of very odd uh, extra things happening at EVO outside of the games, this was a really weird call from uh, from Wiz and the crew. From what I understand, Markman might have been the guy who got it, being he's the main Tekken head among EVO's staff. I mean, I've known Markman since I first started going to forums, like 2004, 2005 or so. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really weird to see um, that he make that call. Because um, he had to assume someone would have had it on video. I mean, it's not the kind of thing, like, for the crowd that um, you keep quiet about. It's not 2003. I mean, this is the age of flip... This is the age of iPhones, not flip phones. Really easy to mm -hmm. share this stuff. And for it to go viral. Mm-hmm. That is 100% true right there. And I, I it, right pretty there. Much, it pretty much, like, backfire on Wizard uh, Wizard and uh, Eva Steph. Like, what do you expect? Like, why would you, like... Why would you, like, do, like, a snake, like type of like easter egg like doing like commotion's break you know like people would think like snake would be in like tekken that's that that that's why i thought too my first saw it but uh snake is not coming to uh tekken and uh konami and uh the voice actor snake are pretty mad about it too so yep yep they did uh there was tweets about this like afterwards right there and one was obviously like you know, it was saying that it was a fun little thing for the audience right there but then like like um david Hare, the voice actor for solid snake right there but more like you know the visible voice actor that they used basically like like said that they did not talk to him about using that right there and did not talk to konami about that right there and it is like a very huge issue with right it because basically they used his voice permission right there for a commercial purpose for right there so that means he did actually get properly paid for it because obviously mm -hmm. There was a different way because he was playing for a because he like you, like he has voice acting for normal uses right there so for his um normal like normal for this private use and then obviously the commercial use ones right there and also then there's voices for related to properties owned by Konami which was Solid Snake so basically there was. So that was the main reason why that it was saying because it was copyright but owned by Konami because they used property from that with like everything for that for something that they did not promote right there for commercial use. And that is one percent like known for why they did do it right there. And obviously Harada even like even got pissed off right there and went a thing on it for it. And basically it was said that it even said to various people that even though it was just for fun right there, it will still, like, hurt his image right there because he didn't approve it right there. It will also disappoint 
all the people thinking that Nishala Sick was coming when it was actually not. Yeah, exactly. They should like give like permission first with like all the uh, all the companies, like everyone else, before like doing something like this again. I feel like. Mhm. Mm that is true, right there. And obviously, it's um, obviously it's a bad part for the like, evil thing right there. And obviously, there's going to be probably definitely some backlash right there from Harada right there, and also probably from Bank and Nako for this happening. And it might hurt any it might hurt future reveals to that right there, or by uh, other things related to evil right there that. Bank Nanko or uh, Harada might not do now because of that. Oh, hopefully not, but we will see what happened in like the near future and all that. So. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, let's go on to the next topic right here, which is um, Street Fighter Five. Street Fighter Five, obviously. I is... loved it. I loved it. Street go Fighter... on. Yeah, sorry. Street Fighter Five right there obviously is like you know normal thing right there. A lot of players like like really a lot like it has some um, like like you know uh, some sour taste in the mouth to a lot of players right now because how uh, actually plays. But obviously people would still love seeing it at a high level right there, and I definitely did watch it, like watching it too right there because it was actually pretty interesting right there. Um, basically the top eight for Street Fighter Five was Bong Chan who won first place. Big Bird, Infestus, Fuzamor, Machibo, Idom, and then uh, Miang Zhe, like Yang Mang, which I'm probably messing up his name, and the Kitsabar Mu. Basically, um, the only one, the only character that was not known right there was a unknown player. Kitsabar Mu right there was a character that basically was able to like do an amazing comeback against. Trash box to able to freaking get in the top eight, which was a pretty good thing. Right there, he's actually uh, he was very lucky to get top eight right there using Zangief. Zangief is, I don't know if he's considered one of the worst characters now because I'm not 100% sure, but I know nowhere close. As says, as says, he's basically he's basically solid mid tier. He's, he's like right in the middle now. Yeah, he's like right in the middle right now. Yeah, like right middle right now. Yeah. There's no way he's like as bad as some other characters. Yeah, because I know that when season two dropped right there, Zangief used like used to be considered almost top tier because how good his setups were. So, uh, and he could anti air for free as well. Yep, true, true. Um, so yeah, let's talk about things. Um, the character uses was Bonsen were using Karen and Zagat, Red a uh, big one was set uh, with Seed, Infestus versus Zeko, Fuzumar with Ibuki, Matsubo with Mikali. I down with Laura, Yang Mizen, Lang Mian with Zeku, and then Kitsaba Mu with Zangief. Obviously right there, like um this was a pretty very good uh, diverse top eight right here, with only two players playing the same character, which is uh, pretty good right there. And it's also a character that we don't see ton a ton often in the past right now, but now we're seeing more of this character pop up now, which is Zeku. And I definitely, definitely did enjoy this top eight right here. Obviously, um, there was uh, other things that, as I, that I really were, didn't really care for, but I still definitely enjoy this top eight right now. Um, uh, this top eight was, was pretty good right there because Bonchan actually finally won his first Evo right there. The last time he was able to get um, uh, like top, you know, he was able to have a chance of winning Evo right there was was in. 2014 against um, Luffy, and he you know, lost because it was a very bad matchup for Tagat back in the day, which Luffy was playing roles, and it was a very, very tough matchup for Tagat to actually do anything for it. But he finally was able to win using Karen and Tagat right there, and he definitely deserves it right there because how good he played this year and last year using uh, using those characters, and he definitely did. He definitely got, finally got what he deserved. So, um, yeah. So, um, for reveals. Obviously, right there, there was actually a very big mishap that happened around Wednesday or so for uh, Street Fighter V that basically was a very big oopsie part on the Steam, which is um, Steam right there is a, uh, is a uh, platform right there that 
It's owned by Valmother that you can buy games from for it. And Valve asked that they like, released um, the trailer for the th all three brand new characters and some new DLC for the game by Aston right there uh, on Wednesday earlier, which was a Honda, Poison, and Lucia that basically got revealed early on. And people were so like uh, surprised about that because it looks very it was a very thing right there and people thought that the leak was a a forced leak meaning it was a uh diversion leak like meaning like you know we get this right there but then we get like a freaking amazing move for it but we found out that this leak was a with legitimate as an the leak right there that was not supposed to happen right there and they we got really freaking depressed on it like uh like um Ono San right there got really freaking like uh, sad like like really freaking sad and depressed because basically all this hard work at for this reveal that he was working on for the like the past like six months or so like or as you know eight months right there since you know he did it back in uh, September uh, back in December was a like re was put all the way down just because because like some, with someone some intern right there or something like that and so they made the video go live early and basically uh we destroyed most of the hype for the review for 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 that and basically everyone like for like in the community right there was like sad like was trying to show the support that basically hey man we're sorry that this happened right here with this review was actually pretty good right there because of the characters for it and don't worry about it right there. We will. We do like this review right there. We're sorry about this. And basically, a lot of like a lot of characters, a lot of players, and a lot of other players just were showing them support after what happened to Ono San and everything like that. And and definitely, it definitely was sad right there. And obviously, the leaks right there obviously were harmful in some right there because obviously it gives a height right there and also hurts like people who actually worked so hard for the reviews right there that actually. For those things to happen right there, it actually does suck. It, it's unfortunate. Um, I can only imagine what the reaction would have been live if uh, Poison showed up. I know Honda's was like their big guns is he's been since, there since the beginning, and uh, he had already been left out across Tekken. So I was wondering like they're just gonna um, retcon out Honda completely. People were wondering. So it looks like that was not the case. Um, Honda is back. Poison has the whole Ghost Rider stuff going for. Have you noticed? Now, Jayco could appreciate this. You recognize some of those moves in uh, her V-Trigger, too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jayco. It's, he's, his mic's muted. Oh, I was going to tell him. Uh, so, Poison's V-Trigger, too, has uh, Ghost Rider's uh, You Dare Touch Me's. Okay. I thought he'd appreciate that. And um, the EX version of her Corsicle Forward Whip is uh, straight up the uh, the rapid fury that he does that uh Jaco likes to use in Time Storm for Ghost Rider, the whip it goods. Um, as for the uh, results itself, I was really sold on Big Bird's performance. Um, I really liked um he made some really strong callouts too, like full screen Tatsus, like he knew someone was going to backdash, and he just uh, called them out on it against Infectious. I thought that was really cool. I like seeing um, Bonchan did get to use Sagat a little bit um, to deal with Zeku in very convincing fashion. So, yeah, I, I liked a lot of what I saw. I also like uh, that Karen is uh, still doing as well as she is. She had a long gap between games, and being a Street Fighter 5 has been like her big comeback. Um, I've been watching her. She has a very Mishima type style, so it's cool to see the whole Electric Wing Godfist Wave Dash style um, in Street Fighter that's not cross Tekken um, really uh, set the tone. Uh, I've actually been playing against her a lot uh, earlier last week when I was at my locals, so it's cool to see things going in that in that direction. And of course, Bon Chan, who has all this history, finally gets over the hump and takes Evo well deserved, and he managed to do it. Uh, without necessarily abandoning Sagat, but keeping him ready in case there's some matchups that would be beneficial for him. And thankfully, he learned his lesson from last time. He kept Sagat ready for matchups he could dominate, like against Infectious and those that might have trouble, like um, Big Bird's 
Rasheed, who was making all these crazy full-screen call-outs, he had Karen ready just in case, and it came down the last wire, but he prevented a uh, bracket reset and hung on to take Evo. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look up uh, what Geef's uh, current tier ranking is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, so it's, I think right now, though, the only two people that I actually thought that were, had, a, had a big chance of winning right there was either Bonjan or Fujimura. I actually expected those two characters to actually win right there before, uh, basically, uh, Big Bird, Big Bird and Festus right there had actually, uh, you know, was able to beat, uh, was able to get past them right there. It was actually pretty, it was actually pretty interesting how far they actually got. Obviously, uh, I did not expect to see Jang Gi from the top eight, too. So, uh, that's definitely hyper sell. Yeah, definitely. Um, it didn't work out as well as he would have liked, but nevertheless, uh, he did have that one really nice round to uh, get people going. Um, for example, like, I think Japan really thinks more highly of uh, Geef than most Americans do. This is why I have the latest tier list from the Gura over at Cyclops Gaming, who, of course, uh, includes players like uh, Goichi in their stable as well, as well as my boy Esta. He didn't get as far as uh, I would have liked to see him, but nevertheless, um, it was good to see. Anyone interested in playing Street Fighter V, I do recommend subscribing to uh, the Cyclops Weeklies on their Twitch. It's $5 a month. And if you're also a Dragon Ball player, you get to see uh, Goichi's Weeklies as well. Um, you learn a lot. They play a huge variety of characters. Um, it's good to kind of uh, analyze what people are going to do in different situations. Um, being this is like one of the most competitive locals in the world, I do recommend uh, giving it a view when you have a chance. I posted the uh, the tier list in uh, Jaco's chat. If you want to look at it, um, you see Geef uh, in the A minus tier according to uh, Dagura. So, like I said, I figured he was like somewhere in the middle. Um, certainly not like uh, one of the worst. Um, he's not like the usual suspects, but nevertheless, um, he is definitely a character who got a lot of benefits in season four that he was lacking in season three. Um, so it's good to see uh, Geef getting back on track. That's good, right there. That's good. So, yeah, so that's um, pretty, very good right there. Let's probably keep moving on right here. Also, there's uh, let's honestly quickly talk about the other the other tournaments real quick before we go into Marvel right there, which is basically the other you know the other main tournament games right there, which is was uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, uh, uh, Undernight and Bear Tech, um, not Tekken, um, um. Mortal Kombat right there in the other games real quick. Um, we're just going to quickly screen this right there. Um, for Ultimate Smash Brothers Ultimate right there, we're going to talk uh, Leo won with Joker right there as that right there. Tweak got second with uh, Pokemon Trader. Gluttony won, uh, got third with Wario. Samur like, got fourth with Pete's Proto, Batman, like, and also Rado tied for fifth using Vegeta. And Duck Knuff is for that. Uh, well, uh, Light one like got seven with Fox, Jacko one got seven with Wolf. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, semi so down. Um, I see. I I'm gonna I'm gonna leave so semi so down for last right there because we will, I want to try to go in more with that right there. Um, Mortal Kombat eleven right there. Um, uh, Sonic Fox won with Casey Cades, Dragon won with, like, I got second with Celsion, Tekken Master, used Ekron, Ares Black, uh, Garrus, Ken Lao, and Sonya at third, Dekalas got third with, uh, Garrus, Foster Genpa got fifth with, uh, with Zeng, uh, Zeng Sung, Ken Lao, and Casey Cades, Tweedy got tied with fifth with Jack Kyo, Rakar, and Garrus, Hitati using Air Black at 7th, and Sinbi got 7th with Cassie Gaze and Jack Kyo. Uh, so Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, Under in Birth. Clear Lamp 1 with Bakura. 2nd um, uh, was Osi, Osihu Kitsu with Seth. 3rd uh, was Hitsuka with Nanase. 4th was Kizu with uh, Yuzuhara. 5th was Kezi with Mika, Wicker was fifth with Enju, Libby Kitsi was seventh with Mika, and then Sandru were was seventh with Ethan. So yeah, then um, for Soul Calibur six we got 
Yuzuru with Voldo, Blue Guard with Enswell, Sky with Mitsurugi, Woz with Raphael, Tomo Gary with Maxi, Sin Chang with Cervantes and Voldo, Kanye with 2B and Zenfura, and then Kanye with Ivy. And for that, uh, we, call, we talked about Cross Boost, Cross Like Bad already. Um, uh, those are the main games with the precise semi zonon. Auto games like one right there, Skill to Give Web 2 right there, Web with Dead by Ruse and Soul, Modified got second with Ido, Pure Pure got, uh, got fed with Jack O, and yeah. Um, Blaze with Bane with Sensor Fix right there, YouTube one with S, Fenrits with Jin second, Boa Bang with Bang, Elliot with Jubilee, um, Josie with Akune, Breaker Dave with Akune, Better Dude with Rakula, and then Nuka with uh, number 12 right there, Volume Bat. Um, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, Natico Sagat won with Chun Li. Rindo MD won with Ren Bison, got second. Logic MD with Vala got third. Sonic Scope 88, Kami. And yep. Um, Melee. I have. Yes. I have to get going. Um, I had another appointment. I will see you guys later. Um, have a good rest of the show, everybody. And anyone watching, um, when you do get to listen to Marvel Infinite portion of this section, just a reminder, I will be uh, running a PC tournament with uh, cash prizes on the line next Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, there's going to be a sign-up on my Twitter for Marvelous Meetings. We are coming back. I know I've been flicking you guys, um, just like I have to kind of leave right now. But next week, we'll be back in action. Leading to the Faded 2 World Championship Series next month where uh, there will be the PC online qualifier for Faded 2 Worlds. Have a good day, everybody. You too. Hmm. Uh, you too, man. See ya. See ya. Okay. Okay, so, okay. Then Super Smash Bros. Melee. Hungry Box got first with, with Juggler Pop. Super Hot Ice Climbers got second. Bug Wife got third with Fox. Dang Salmon with Seek. Like Sekla with Captain Falcon. Clutch with Fox. Natsu with Pete's. Aiden... Uh, SK92 with Falco. Um, there's a lot of other side tournaments right here that I'm not going to worry about right here. Um, and a lot of side tournaments right there. Okay, and okay, let's go to the other, the last main game right there, which says Samurai Soul Down. Of okay. Which tournament right there. One second, I have to find it real quick. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like came back. I was like helping my mom with some uh, stuff while I'm back now. I was like collecting the whole time. Wait, so okay. I missed too much. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, Summer I saw down right there. Summer I saw down right there is a fighting game right there that basically is a very fussy, fussy, base heavy fighting game right there. That basically is a a game that will punish you severely if you mess up once. Uh, Summer I saw down mm -hmm. right there was won by Ilfa Tracer right there with Jinshiro. Second place was Kazunoko with Haramaru. Justin Wong with Tam Tam for third, Reynolds with Jinshiro uh, and Hamaru for fourth, Alex Valet with Gal Ford for fifth, RB <laughs> with Jinshiro with tied for fifth with Jinshiro, uh, Did Mon KOF with them got seventh with Jinshiro, then ZJZ got seventh with Charlotte. And this right here is a pretty good top eight right there. Obviously, it was a, it had a lot of, um, it had three, no, it had four uh, Jin shows in the thing right there. Was is considered he's considered one of the best characters in the game right there with Ten Tam. Mm -hmm. Jin Jin Shiro right there is, if you didn't know, he is a very, very people consider him a very scrubby character because he has. So a good range right there. He has a cross up record for it right there. He has a big Oh what kid? Tam Tam? No no uh Jinshiro. Jinshiro right there is a very Oh yeah. Jinshiro is very good. Yeah, Jinshiro is considered a very scrubby based character. Scrubby being like he very easy right there with a lot of like musical moves that are um that not a lot of people actually were get used to with them, but there's a difference right there that Jinshiro is also a very good character. He has a lot of freaking like moves that will cross you up right there. Some very good setups right there that are very hard to block. He has very good things. He has a DP move that is a very good DP move because uh, the light version right there is safe right there on block most of the time right there. If you uh, if you if the opponent 
doesn't know about that or predicts that there's a prediction you can do the light version. There's other things for it right there, and it shows that's like a very good character for it. He has a lot of good things right there, and people we didn't have him, but I do like Infiltration's play for the thing. Obviously, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, his gameplay in Samurai Shard is like really good, surprising enough. Yeah, it basically like in show right there is basically a character that basically wants you to be get close right there to have him mess you up right there. He for he basically forces you to get close right there so he can mess you up. Basically, he mm-hmm. he doesn't if like have anything at range right there. So basically, he tries to like have you commit the stuff so he can punish you for it. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, Hamara right there is the next is like the second character one. Hamara right there is basically the right you of the game right there that has like some of the good normals right there. He has a projectile right there. He has a DP right there and everything like that. He's a very good character and basically he's I guess a no good character. He's a he has a lot of good tools with it that actually help him out in the, like, how he actually is right there. Basically, that's really good. And Tantam right there. Tantam is a footsie monster right there. He has the best brains of all the characters in the game. He has mm-hmm. such good tools for it right there. And also, if he gets this, this arm right there, he only loses his reins for it. But he ha- but he is all he can use all his other special moves for it most of the time. That's actually really good for it. And Tantam right there just basically loves to freaking poke you right there and try to like hit you with stuff like that. And, and Tantam is just very good. So yeah, um, I definitely. Yep, did... that's uh, that's the reason why that's the reason why Shasha Wong used that cat. That cat is like really like cheap, you know, with his long range and almost. Yep, that's it. So yeah, so I definitely, I definitely did enjoy the top eight for uh for this game right here and. It definitely was pretty good. I actually say that you should watch it right there. Obviously, I actually wanted to see Alex Value try to get a bit, bit faster right there, but basically Red Old basically just destroyed him, and that's mm-hmm. that that shows how freaking bad he like got bit beaten up right there. Like uh like Alex Value was getting destroyed by uh Red Old like in this in this game right here. <laughs> so I haven't uh, I haven't like got a chance to like watch the top eight when I was at like evil but uh you know good stuff for uh, infiltration for winning the whole type thing and uh, good stuff for him man yeah definitely right there right back there it looks like it looks like that's his new game because they cannot play three five of five well mostly the the capcom fall to a cup for like a year or two so yeah i don't see why not go why i don't see why not go go similar show them full time you know yeah so yeah um let's talk about the like stuff with infiltration okay Obviously, uh, we, we know that last year, Infiltration right there, they had al- accusations right there brought up against him right there. I'm not going to say, like, what, if he did, like, if he, what he said was true or not right there, because obviously we would never know for sure right there. But basically what happened is that he like, got an altercation with his wife right there, and basically he, uh, basically, uh, like, basically, uh, basically said that he was guilty for it right there. And basically, uh, mm-hmm. like, I got, and basically, we don't know much about it, right? there besides what, uh, Panda, Panda, Panda Gaming was uh, known to for it, and basically, when the acquisition came down, right there, he was basically bombarded with freaking a lot of freaking negative comments and everything for it, and yep. he basically decided with um with Pen- Panda Gaming right there, and also with Kacken Cup that he would. Basically, back out of the 2018 uh, Capcom Cup right there, with he like he did get banned from it. He volunteered to uh, basically back out of it, so that he could, if he wanted to, back out. Like he can still play in like 2019 to 2020 tournament later on, but he like basically obviously wanted to try to go down on something like that. Uh, obviously that. But um, obviously he uh, was able to get back in Evo this year, and basically played right there, and basically won won Evo. But um, there was a th- tweet from the official, um, like um, Evo thing right there that basically tweeted out uh, about Infiltration is trying to return to fighting games right there. That basically, basically like put a lot of them in hot water for it right there because people did not like infiltration being back in the spotlight at the end because of that and basically he he still had a lot of negative light on him because of what happened right there and people 
did not like him being part of this community yet. And basically, um, so we got if, um, the infiltration got a lot of backlash and evil got a lot of backlash for basically praising this character that basically a lot of people presume that he's still the guy that harmed to his wife or not. Which is um, not a good light for that right then people. And there was a lot of stuff that people did not enjoy about that tweet at all. Even though some people actually still enjoyed Patrice and winning and everything like that. Well, I mean, for me at least, I'm like happy that the uh, situation is like back into the uh, back into like competitive fight against again. And it's great to see him in again, man. I mean, with uh, with the whole like situation with him and and, and his wife, um, but uh, for what I heard, it's like false like information that uh, he didn't like hit his wife and all that. So yeah, so. It's... Yeah, I know, but we don't know for sure for it right there what he exactly did right there. Obviously, there's pictures mm -hmm. for it right there, but there's also a lot of hearsay and a lot of freaking stuff like that that we have to go for the other languages for it, and also a lot of a lot of freaking documents about the case right there that we probably yeah. don't know right there because obviously it's legal documents from a different country that probably are very lean, but probably not that okay releasing documents from a certain case right there so uh -huh. we will not know unless like a, like a big f actual proof right there of what actually happened right there comments from it right there we don't know until that uh -huh. yeah so obviously right there i do the i do like that infiltration did one right there but obviously we i since it's definitely still messed up that you know that that still has but like, gotten that happened right there and basically all the backlash from evil from doing that tweet obviously i didn't like i definitely don't know why that people did not like that tweet right there and definitely do agree why that tweet probably should not have gotten out like that but um there's a lot of other stuff right there to it uh another thing like that that happened too with infiltration right there that um during the highlight world when they close out the tournament right there the review um Infiltration's win right there was absent from the wheel right there. That they made nobody so everyone won. Infiltration win was not in it. So if you want to know. Oh really? Yes. I didn't know about this. Yeah. Mm. So they they probably got a lot of backlash off of that and decided not to have that in there for some reason. Mm. So yeah. Um, that's that, kind of crazy, and I go like, but it, it you is, know, by by you know like you know some people don't like a certain like person. It's and that's why it is you know. It is what it is. Yep, definitely true. Um, yeah, so let's go into a po more positive light, which was the reveal for uh, some various games like that for this. Um, basically, there was actually um, a couple multiple reveals for this game right here. Uh, one was that they obviously released um, another character. Another they actually released a new character for. Um, for their, um, like, semi sold down right there. That's a three, a free character for a anyone that actually wants to have them, which is actually pretty good. It actually was a very unexpected surprise right there for, um, for basically semi sold down. And let me get the, ga the character's name real quick. <laughs> mm hmm. That was, uh, that was like a lot of, uh, good, like, reviews this year. At uh, Eva, a lot, a lot of them I saw like live at the uh, Eva main stage arena on uh, last Sunday. That was really cool, man. A lot of uh, good reviews. But uh, but uh, we would get into that in like a second too. Okay, so basically, it a new care a, a new character got released. The character's name is Sims Mario Hizame. He uses looks mm -hmm. like a umbrella for his main weapon right there. For it, it actually is I feel like he's a previous character too. It so he can't, he's not a brand new character. He comes from uh, he's a um, old character from the previous games. Obviously we got he's coming in September sometime, so that's actually pretty cool. Obviously we saw the full trailer for Wilbur right there for that. We also uh. We got a like a uh, release. We got release time frames for a lot of characters. What's mm -hmm. basically we're gonna get a new character every single month till December. Um, then they also announced season two for right there, and then 
then Mina Marzi Mina is a going to be a playable character too in the season two of this game right here, which is actually pretty cool. Because from what it looks like right there, her main uh, weapon is a bow, so I can't wait to see how she plays right there. And also, she is a very highly requested character too, for what it looks like, because she got in because of uh, being requested right there. So that's actually pretty awesome. Yeah, it's cool, man. That that they like listening to the uh, the fan base on like what candidates is like you put in for like for semi show and and all that. That is definitely true. Um, and uh, and plus the DLC is free too, so that's pretty awesome of yeah, them yeah, doing that. Yeah, that is true right there. Um, then we have oh yeah, then obviously Rimu came out a couple of days ago. Rimu was actually pretty interesting. See, seems like she has very freaking good Oki. Like, very good knockdown mix-ups right there for it right there, with, like, stuff for that that you have to block and everything like that. But, obviously, does she doesn't have a lot of range for her Lomos right there for it. So, I think mm -hmm. she, that she could have potential right there for it, but her lack of Lomos in this game right there means so that she has to, like, uh, be careful when pressing stuff. And also, I think she has low health, too. So, obviously, she will probably get a lot of damage. She will probably take a lot of damage, too. I agree. I need to probably try out some more because I tried it out for a bit right there. She has some interesting things about it. But she looks like she, her special moves right there are mainly just for uh, for mix-up pressure and everything like that. So I can't wait for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, another thing is that uh, there was actually a new character, uh, a new character we've like announced for... Um, so Calibur 6, which was uh, Cassandra, which is a previous character from the old games right there, which is actually pretty good, if you remember. She has a small, like a small mm -hmm. sword and shield right there, and she is a, I think a fan favorite or something like that. That actually is pretty good. Yeah, she is. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, they announced that there's going to be more characters for coming for the game for Season 2, and then a, there's going to be a new guest character in the game, which is Hamaro from... Samurai sold out, which is actually pretty freaking awesome. So that's freaking awesome, man. I saw that live too at the arena, and I was like, "Oh man, that's that's crazy, man. Pretty hype." Yeah, it is yeah, doing that. It is definitely pretty hype right there. I can't. Uh, how it says I don't own like a Soul Calibur like six at all. I did play the beta. Same bit. here. I said I, I said I might I might try to actually get that game later on right there, but obviously. Like with me, with how many fighting games there are right now, it's gonna be very, very hard to actually play that and everything like that. Oh yeah, because <laughs> like it's like if you have the money to like buy like all these fighting games, sure, sure, go ahead, you know. But uh, it's like a lot of fighting games these days too. Yep, true, true. So yeah, and uh, and uh, it, and uh, it's pretty interesting that SNK is, SNK is like doing all these like crossovers with like all, with the with this with these like auto like companies like uh. Finally, EX, finally EX Lair, Perry, uh, Attack of Saturn, Geese, uh, May, and uh, DOA, and now, uh, what's his name again? It's Old Calvin 6 from... Homaru? Homaru, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty sick, man. Yeah, definitely pretty sick right there. Definitely do think. Um, okay, so there is one more announcement that we're going to go through real quick, which is basically the announcement for... Um, Guilty Gear, the new a uh, new Guilty Gear was the trailer looks pretty fucking awesome right there, and it was actually pretty freaking good. And I am definitely interested in freaking trying out the Guilty Gear because I did buy Guilty Gear like uh, X uh, like X third X third right there, and I definitely do like it. I actually do like Voss for it, definitely my type of character. But I want to actually see what they're actually going to do with a new Guilty Gear right there. Because there's been uh, other stuff for the game that they announced right there that they're going to try to make it more simplified right there. So that it doesn't have all the crazy ass mechanics for it. And trying to, they're also going to try to do st stuff new to the series right there that they, don't, they have never done before. So I want to actually see what they actually do right there. But obviously some people are very freaking worried of it right there because they 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 are they like the highly tactical stuff right there for for like guilty gear that is known for for the game. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm well, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll be like more infinite, mostly because like I mean at first like 
myself and like everyone else when we like heard about the news about like Marvel Infinite being like a more simplified like Marvel game we were like worried at first. But uh, but uh, when the game like came out and that, and all that like the game was like really like fun to play and like a lot a lot of the combos were like pretty like hard to do. Mm-hmm. Not hard, I mean like it's a lot of, like muscle memory to do. Mm-hmm. It's it's, it's kind of like a, it's a very complex like high level game, you know. Yeah, that is true right there. So yeah, I can't wait to actually try it out right there and actually see it. Also, there was a there was a new character too that um I forgot his name that looks pretty badass. And it's another, it looks badass, man. Mm-hmm. And also, it's another black black character too <laughs> that says we had two character or two characters that got revealed were that are black that were released in fighting games. Three if you count if you yeah. count if, three if you count Blitz Tank. <laughs> Oh yeah, Blitz Tank. Blitz Tank. <laughs> oh man, I love that character so much. It's, it's a tank with a skeleton on top. You know, when I when I ever like get like BB Tank, I'm using that character no matter what. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey, did you actually try out the original game at all? Cause you can actually. Find... Oh no, I have. A... Oh no, I have a, like I like try the original game. I saw some like gameplay like after well, they but announced, basically, basically announced it's that. for it's for the PC right there. You can actually find it for free if you actually look for it. Oh, it's for free. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Thing. I can probably send you a link for it too. Uh, the game like does have it online, but it's like old online for it. Meaning like you have to find uh, another player, then you have to give them your IP address like this, so they can connect, connect to it right there. So you know it does. It has like old type of net code for it. So like you actually have to, you have to use an app program to actually use it to connect to someone else. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But you can obviously okay. try it. Um, yeah. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. Um, so that now let's go over to Marvel's Capcom Infinite and Marvel's Capcom Three. I um, I wasn't unable to I was unable to like uh, cast the Marvel Infinite tournament at all because I think I was watching something else. But I was able to watch uh, the, the, uh, the Marvel Infinite the uh, Marvel Infinite tournament. Uh, the side tournament for that was like all like all stream. And I uh, mean, a few other guys that like, recorded like most of the uh, the matches, including the uh, the top sixteen as well as top eight. Yes. Uh, it's I already like got done like editing and like uploading the uh, not I mean it's haven't been like uploaded yet, but everything is pretty much done. So yes. make sure guys so uh, yeah make sure guys to like stay tuned for that. Yes. So we'll be uploading that in like in the next like day or so. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, says mm-hmm. if I did watch the Marvel's Capcom 3 tournament because I was it was that and also I wanted to see it right there because I wanted to see a Hagar offer player win. <laughs> oh Stab Tap? Oh yeah man. He almost won too man. He, like, he, like, al- he, find those. he, he, he almost won too right there. <sighs> that was crazy man. Like he, he beat uh Joy D. Put him into losers. That's like a wide thing too. I'm like, holy shit dude. Yeah, holy then, shit, love it. Yeah, then <laughs> Yeah, all because he, he lost because he freaking was pressing buttons at the wrong time and basically like lost because he like got hit by missiles and died because of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm all free stuff, man. Like if you get if you get hit, like if you ever like get hit once, you're like pretty much dead. That's uh, yeah. The ba- game ba- the ba- basically, yeah, that 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 is basically neutral to not so right there. Basically, yep. Like 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 in Marvel vs. Capcom, like like. Like I said right there in Dragon Ball Fighters, you can get hit ten times from random fucking stuff. You like lose neutral ten times. You and you can still win. Well in Marvel, if you get hit once, you lose immediately. That's basically the fucking game right there. <laughs> that is Yeah, great. pretty much, man. That is one percent the freaking thing. So just so yeah, that's basically uh, that. I definitely did enjoy the like, Marvel Scout on three tournament just because I had a thing right there. I was just I was so rooting for uh Sack to have to win right there because I wanted to freaking have Arthur just win Evo for some reason. Oh, uh, same here, man. I want Ghostwriter to like win Evo from all three, man. Like me and uh, him are like the yeah. only like feel like Ghostwriter's left. Yeah. And uh, I also got a, I also got like twenty five plays plays out of one hundred plays in that tournament too. So I almost made it to like top sixteen, but uh, I lost to a. Uh, uh, Zero Max, he's the, uh, Zero May Quiet player. He, I lost to him, like, twice, in winners and losers. Yeah. He's really good. 
says yep says different thing says also ah fuck it sucks that freaking Angelic right there didn't have a chance to win right there too because Angelic could have Angelic had so much so many chances to actually win too it sucks that he did have, like he does he like just like dropped a lot of combos but freaking hell he did so yes the best moment in the tournament right there was this big this fucking chat tap this freaking this like coming back with Hagar and Fucking like comeback moments that he should not have fucking did right there, but he got. Oh man, that comeback was ridiculous, man. Yeah, with yeah. Hagar, Besides, what, what the he got? He got he got hit. Like uh, Zoe D got hit because he like wanted to fucking get the fuck out of there. When basically he could have just blocked, push blocked it right there, and basically got out of there fucking scot free right there. But nope, he yeah. he wanted to fucking spat ass out of it with Doom right there and lost because of it. And he freaking like got he got thick crossed up. In the corner right there, what Sassy was, that was actually pretty good right there. And basically, Joey D, if he didn't freaking air back ass on income, like when when on incoming against the Haggai, he would have, you know, like not how that comeback would have not happened in the first place. But yeah, exactly. Yep. All but all because he wanted to say nope, we'll get the fuck out of there. He was like, pipe, and Sassy ha- was like, pipe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was the thing, and also also oh. Also, that freaking like, reaction right there that basically uh, Sakta did right there and Bay w- was able to freaking ask for the guard cancel and they were able to freaking uh, hit two characters with level two X Factor with Offer and do the. I remember move. that. Yeah, that, that right there is actually really tough to do in level two X Factor. So he had like the execution for it. So that's actually pretty damn cool that he has, was able to do that too. Mm-hmm. He's very smart, man. Very he's, smart. He's, like very, he's a very great player. Very good player, yep. Def- definitely is very freaking good right there. If you like Marvel right there, just watch this top right there. Just because you want to just play for Sack Top to win right there because of his team. Like, so, so yeah, so top eight, Joe D, Sack Top, uh, Damage, Angelic, Jabril, Wetno, it's, oh, Wetno got top eight. Top eight, too. Yep. I got a Hazy. Then, Knife, Tong, Kyle P, uh, Chi Chan, Ashilion, PZ Foy, I Have Justice, Geo Max, and uh, APD. Oh, that's good. nice, man. Pretty good top eight right there. So that's actually pretty good. I also got a, a shout out to me again for getting 25 place yeah. in that tournament as well. Mm-hmm. It was a like one place too. So, You're like, good stuff to me, man. Good stuff. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so um, let's go over the final topic. Of the thing with it, which is basically your basically time. Well, today. actually, well, actually, uh, actually, do you want to go over the results for more infinite? You forgot about that. Uh, let's let's uh, do some light harder dudes and then do the last one right there because we don't want to talk about that right there and talk about oh my try my time at Eva was great right there, <laughs> but then uh, talk about like sexual sauce first right there. <laughs> let's go over your thing and then we can talk about that last. Okay, sounds good, man. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, my this this is actually my second year being at Evo this time around. Uh, this year at Evo 2019 was like an an amazing experience for me. As always, it was like great, man. I got a chance to uh, I could like follow my notes very quick. I actually got my notes ready to go. Uh, what I did at Evo, like all that. Well, pretty much I hang out and like play like a crap time Marvel. With uh, with all the FGC and Marvel homies there, it was a it was a blast, man. That too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recorded like a lot of uh footage for uh, Marvel Infinite and uh, Ultimate Marvel Three for the pool matches, sets, casuals, and all that. It was really cool, man. I also did like recorded like a lot of uh footage and all that for my uh Eve of Vlog video. If you guys don't know, I'm doing the uh my next uh Shaco Mania Vlog video for Eva. So stay tuned for that, y'all. That'll mm-hmm. be coming soon, pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. And uh, I also got like a lot of uh, prizes and gifts from all my uh, homies as well. Uh, one of my uh, good friends, uh, Kevin Hart, and her uh, girlfriend uh, got me. They gave me this uh, awesome uh, drawing of me doing the Sonic Adventures one post, like a shibby out of me. And uh, he, they, it's like a sticker form, so let me just put that in the 
group in uh in the main shit room so you guys can uh see hmm. I, I actually got like two of them it's pretty cool man it's like a shabby up version of me doing like the sonic one pose it's on the uh, sonic avengers one pose mm, do you see it yeah interesting uh yeah it's really cool, man. You know that. Uh, I got like a lot. Of, I got like a, a lot of our gifts. I got some T-shirts. Uh, I actually got a a, a tapping shirt. Finally saw it on that uh, at the Amal Salty Suite. Uh, Wei Sham and a few others were doing a uh, tapping uh, tournament, and that turned today. I also got like a lot of uh, tapping T-shirts because of the the guys. At Tappen, they gave like a lot of uh, they gave all these like T-shirts to like Wave Shen, and uh, they they were supposed to be at the uh, the salty street, you know, watching us play. But uh, I got like pretty late, and uh, they could have like came on time. So we pretty much like, so they pretty much like talk like a picture, like all of our forms and all that, and uh, they post it on Twitter, and tell like tell all the Tappen guys, hey guys, we are doing the uh, the Tappen tournament and all that. Yeah, that was like pretty fun to do that at Tappan tournament. Mm -hmm. It was uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely pretty interesting. Yeah, so pretty much I got that. Uh, so pretty much we got like a lot of like Tappan t-shirts. So I got one for free for entering that tournament. So that was cool. Definitely. And uh, and uh, it was actually my first time going to the uh, the Evil main stage arena for the top eight. Uh, this year. Because I did, like, one day, like, the last year, I was just, like, hanging out with, like, everyone else. But, uh, me and my, uh, friend Charlie, uh, we decided to, like, go to the, uh, the top eight arena this year. We bought our tickets, like, early and all that. And, uh, the games we, uh, watched for that was, uh, Street Fighter Five, Tekken, and, uh, Smash Ultimate Top Eights. It was, uh, it was great, man. You know, it was pretty, like, crazy to a lot of our hype moments of doing that it was like pretty awesome to like see all those like moments in like a live crowd reaction it was like really loud too yeah and uh i was about to say so oh yeah i did it we didn't like watch like ways with top eight unfortunately i really want to watch that but uh but uh we decided to like wait for like street fighter five and all that so yeah and all the games I know what you mean. I'm not really like a big, I'm not really like a big like BB tag player, but I do like like watch the games here and there too. <laughs> and uh, for the uh, oh yeah, I, went, I also went to the uh, the Marvel Salty Suite on Saturday. That was a lot of fun too. And uh, we they did like a lot of uh, a lot of uh, exhibition sets for my Infinite the, uh, the next hit wins crew. They did, they recorded like a lot of like. Exhibitions for my Infinite, and uh, I won the uh, the Mall Free exhibitions. Uh, we did uh, what we did. We did Frankie G against. Uh... Hang on, let me look up his name very quick. Okay. Because we did a uh, first ten set money match between uh, Frankie G against. Uh... Hang on, where is he? Where is he? Oh, here we go, Hardy. Yeah, that was Frankie G against Hardy for like. First to ten for fifty bucks, so that was like pretty fun to watch. Frankie G won that. It was like ten seven, and uh, we did like and we did like two automobile. We, we did like two autos. Uh, Kyle B, Kyle P against uh, Jane C. If you don't know who that is, he's a another Japanese player that uses uh, Zero, Dante, and Doom. Okay, interesting. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I actually did play against him in the uh, the Marvel Infinite uh, side tournament. During that, I actually like he also he does use a uh, zero hot guy with face or mind stone. That was that's pretty interesting. And I beat him in that tournament like three zero. It was some good games. And uh, what else? Well, the Marvel Sunday suit was like really awesome, man. We play like a lot of games and all that. No, I didn't imagine they had the Tappan tournament. That was fun too. Uh, they also did a uh, arm wrestling tournament too. It was like <laughs> it was pretty funny too. I actually like went up to like one of the uh, 
I should like challenge like one of the guys who did like on Wesley contest. And uh, and he well he did like the swami. It was like cross, but like I gave up like halfway. It was like it was like so cross. It was like uh, I can't I can't do this anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what else? Yeah. What are you saying, man? No, no, nothing. I missed it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Monster Salty Street was like pretty awesome until uh, before before that we had a. Uh, Pre Marvel Salty Street, it was the uh, the Marvel Infinite uh, Wager Tournament on uh, last Friday at the Luxor Hotel. It was like the same hotel as the uh, the Salty Street, but uh, we did the uh, the tournament and uh, El Tolo's uh, hotel room and all that. Uh, that tournament was, was like really fun, man. We only we were gonna do like double elimination. But uh, we didn't have like enough like setups to do that, so we had to do like singles elimination only. So so yeah, so so yeah, there was like twenty uh, players in that tournament. It was like pretty fun. It was myself, Bane, uh, Altola, uh, Wei Shen was in it, Knives, Mega Man DS, and a few other guys too. So pretty much for that uh, tournament, I don't know. You had to. Uh, What's what? Yeah, it's like max out to like nine points. So pretty much like, example like, Dante is like six points. If you want to use like Dante to mumble, both of them are six points. So you can't even use both of them. You have to use like one or the other. And the stones are in the list too. Like uh, space, so it are four points. Power is two. Uh, time reality at uh, two points, and mine is one point. So you had to like figure out what characters you got used, and uh, be what characters and like stones you are going to use, with being a nine point points maximum. So so for me, I use uh, Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider, wheel and with time stone, and I got second place in a tournament. Yeah. I play against. Uh, Oh, thanks, man. And I got a uh, and a play against uh, and a play against uh, Bane Holland Grand Finals for that tournament. He he was using a uh, Black Panther and Winter Soldier Power Stone. It was like it was like pretty like cross. It was like he won obviously, so it was like three two. I talked I talked like two games out of him. It was like really cross. I was won that tournament, but uh, you know, good games for Bane Holland, man. Mm -hmm. His uh, his Black Panther was like really nice. Like oh like. Not gonna lie, man. You got those like you got those like loops, the uh, quite a lot loops for Black Panther. So it gets up to him. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and uh, you know, I, I know, shout out to him winning the uh, more infinite side tournament as well. So he pretty much like win like both tournaments. So it gets up to him. Mhm. Mm True. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Sunday, like after the uh, after we get got done with the Smash Ultimate Top Eight and all that, uh, I we well I went to the Evo Red Bull after party afterwards, but uh, but uh, my friend uh, Charlie he came along with me to Las Vegas. He couldn't like come inside because he was only like nineteen, unfortunately. So he had to like stay at my uh, friend's uh, hotel room. In the same uh, Luxor Hotel, it was a uh, Wamala, aka Austin, the uh, the Zero Doom Virgil player. If you know him, mm -hmm. yeah, he was like he was like staying there with uh, with his other like boys, so playing like Tekken Seven, Street Fighter Five, same like Showdown, Marvel, all that good stuff. And uh, and for me, I went down to the uh, the after party, and uh, it was a blast, man. They got like. They got like a dance floor. They got like a DJ. The DJ was pretty sick. Uh, oh, one second, man. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, one of my, one of my nephews say hi to me. But uh, anyways, uh, the after party was sick, man. There was a dance floor. Uh, the DJ was pretty sick, man. Uh, they they play like a lot of uh, great music. Yeah, some classics. And some some new songs. That was like drinks too. But but if you guys if you guys know me, I don't drink like alcohol. Ever. I'm not really a big fan of the taste at all. I usually like have like a Red Bull or water. That too. 
I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming you don't like alcohol either, Zooms. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see that too. Uh, yeah, the after party was really sick, man. I gotta lie. That. Uh, you know, I got a, got a, got a chance to like talk to everyone there. Quick, she was there. Yikes. Uh, no, be hungry was there. Knives. Puzzle was there. Like everyone was there, man. That was a blast. And uh, and then let's get get to the other one. I also for my results at Evil this year, uh, I got nine plays out of six players in the infinite tournaments. Mm-hmm. Twenty five plays out of one hundred players in the model three tournament that I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. And I got second place in the uh, the ratio tournament that I mentioned like a few minutes ago. You know, good stuff for me uh, this year. I think I think I did like I think I I did like I, I did like way better this year than like last year with like the the play scenes that I got for Infinite and Mile Three because last year I got like seventeen plays out of like one hundred twenty eight for the Mile tournament last year and I got like fifty or sixty plays in the Mile Three tournament last year so so it's like a pretty like big like improvement on my skills and as a player as well. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I also did. I also did a uh, play in the uh, the Power Rangers Battle for the Grid tournament that was hosted on Friday and Saturday, hosted by uh the guys at Cross Counter and uh, the guys who made the game, like Quack Quack and all those guys. I got a chance to like talk to those, talk to those guys too. It was pretty cool, man. I did like pretty like decently in those in those tournaments, but I don't need to play Power Rangers that much. But it was still fun, though, man. Mhm. That was mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, it was really fun, man. I did. I did talk to to talk to Quark, Quark and a few other guys, talking and saying, "Hey, uh, is there gonna be more support for the game? You know, I love the game, and all you know." And uh, they told me that I got they got like more big plans for the game in the future. They mentioned, so that's gonna be pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I think that. It for that, but uh, let's see. Let's go for the next one. Who do I meet? And evil. Uh, I say I met, I met like all my, like everyone on the Marvel FGC homies that I mentioned before. Uh, I talked to, let's see, I saw. Let's see, talked to James Shan. You know, funny enough, guys, James Shan was going to be here on the broadcast for today, but uh, but uh, he's having some like sweep, some sweep scheduling issues, so he can't even really make it. Yeah. Was, yeah, that sucks. What happens? No, it happens, you know. But he's a, but he is down to like join uh, one of our TNT broadcasts in the future. He say so. That's, that's pretty actually, exciting. That's actually pretty cool. Mhm. Mhm. Yep. And I uh, and I like a while back, but I met the uh, the legendary Mike Was. Mike that's... Was the man himself. It was yes. really awesome, man. Like meet him in person. I already like met met uh, good packs at Comic Break like a few months back. We talked for a bit, and uh, Mike Watson is a cool ass dude, man. Was, I'm pretty, I'm pretty like happy to see him, and uh, pretty happy to see him like coming back to like fighter games to the community. Playing that, uh, he's playing that uh, guilty gear. I forgot what Canada does he use guilty gear. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Uh, what? Uh, what character does he use in Guilty Gear? Because I remember him like doing pretty well last uh, year in Guilty Gear. Like what player? Uh, Mike Was, yeah. Uh, Axel. Oh yeah, Axel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that too. And also, let's see. I talked to Yikes. The Yikes is always he's a cool ass dude. Quack Quack. Take to Steve. He, he's pretty awesome too, man. Uh, I actually met Lord of God too. He's a cool ass dude, man. We talked like a picture, and I told him I'm a big fan, big fan of his of his videos and all that. He's a cool dude, man. Mm-hmm. Let's see, I met uh, older son. You know, cool dude. You know, I love him. You know, we shout out for him for like you know, putting all the work for Street Fighter for Capcom and all that. I also then met uh, Eris. Oh, uh, one second. Okay. Uh, so, 
Oh, I, I'm here now, sorry about okay. that. Are you Yeah, sorry, my bad. But, uh, but I also did met, uh, Eris. You know who Eris is, right? The, uh, the guy who's, like, pretty, like, big in the tech and soul cover community. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I also did met, uh, Eris. He was cool as well. I actually did met him, like, dude, like, top, top eight. Tech and Saturn, like last Sunday, he was really cool, man. Uh, let's see, I was a mess. Uh, Ally Joe, I met Mark Man, Maximilian, dude, I saw, talked to him. I met a John D, it was by the uh, one up arcade uh, area, so I talked to him for like for a bit. And I uh, and I and I got like a lot of people like walking up to me saying that uh, saying that uh, they watched my videos and one nuts, they're like a big fan. Yeah, that, that's that's really awesome, man. Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was really awesome to see, like you know, like it feel like people like walk up to me to say, "Hey, I shall come in," and you know, I'm like, "Yes, yes, sir, the one and only." And then they told me they love all my videos and one that you know that's but that's really like, what's the word like? I really do appreciate that, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Like that, yeah. that definitely is like something that will just help you bring right back up when it says, "Hey, I watched you right there. Thanks for uploading videos and stuff like that." That's definitely yeah, exactly, uh, man. It's like it's like brand recognition and like getting my name, getting my name name out there. Mm -hmm. It was really cool, man. And uh, yeah, for the uh, any like any moments doing my stay at Evil, oh, I got like a, I got like a few of them. Uh, after the, uh, on, like, set, last Saturday, like, after the, uh, the Marvel Suite, when we were, like, leaving, like, going back to the, uh, the Melee Bay Hotel, we were, uh, well, we were, like, walking at, by the, we were, like, walking back, and, uh, we saw these, like, group of people, and, uh, one of the guys that had, like, long blonde hair in the hat, he was, like, high as hell. <laughs> and then, uh, and then he asked me, oh, yo, dude, you had, oh, yo, dude, you going Yo, do you add Evil Man? Holy shit, he got second place. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. You know, he said, oh shit, man, nice. I'm like, thank you. And then he paused for like five seconds. And then he started like laughing. Oh shit, I forgot to say. He started laughing and all that. So that was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, when uh, me and uh, Charlie, when we were like walking to the after party, uh, we literally, like, saw some, like, some guy who, who, like, who was, like, drunk and inside of the Luxor Hotel. And then he yelled out, I'm drunk, like, very loud. <laughs> that yeah. was, uh, that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know, I'm drunk. <laughs> that was, uh, it was pretty interesting, pretty funny. And, uh, and, oh, yeah, myself and Knives... The uh, Sigma do Marvel player. We did a uh, first to ten money match for twenty bucks at the pre Marvel Salty Street uh, last Friday. It was some close matches, man. Uh, he won. It was like ten seven. It, it, the, the footage is actually on my YouTube channel. Why not, guys? If you guys want to check that out, it's pretty really fun to watch. Sad to watch. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, another like. It's like a lot of like funny stuff with like Ola Uh on on the last Saturday, like Ola Sun like went we were, were like walking around by the uh, the Ultima free like tournament the section around there and then like literally like myself and like everyone else were like asking him like jokingly, Hey, hey, hey Ola Sun, when's Marvel for? When's Marvel man? And all that and he started like laughing and all that. <laughs> it was really funny, man. I actually do have like I do actually do have like footage. Of that happening, uh, I'll be pulling that up pretty soon when I when I get a chance. That was pretty yeah. hilarious, man. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely sounds uh, hilarious. Yeah, actually, it actually was, man. Like, we were not expecting that. Like all of a sudden, was like walking around, and then he was like in like one area to be in. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely in the wrong area to be in. <laughs> definitely the wrong area. But uh, mm -hmm. but that. Oh yeah, I also got like. Two evil bashes. Here's the funny story with that. On Friday, I was like picking up my bash, 
I, I got my badge. I pay. I, I already like pay for it. You know, it was like well, like eighty bucks for the badge and all that. And I got my badge on that day. And then the next day, next day on Saturday, I saw that was like a custom made like badge. Hey, uh, to like take your custom made badge with your names. I'm like, oh wait. Oh wait, I I all of my badge with my name on it. So I went up there. Oh hey, do you guys have my uh? I bash with my custom main day walk and he found it and I got I got like another like bash for free. So technically I had like two bashes when I was at the event last week. That was uh, that was pretty cool and uh, I used uh, one of the uh, one of my actual bash to like get like all my friends like sneak into the the venue. Like some of my friends were like doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty hilarious. That was pretty funny. Yeah. And, uh, mm hmm. Yeah, they, yeah, like a lot of, like, a lot of uh, people were, like, doing that. Like, they were, like, sneaking people in with their badges. Like, I'm not sure how they did it. But, uh, but, uh, that's, like, a, sh that, that, that's, like, a very, like, small way to do it. And, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Water Story, uh, Eric from Soul Cow. <laughs> that's so funny because that's uh, the security did we, did we really care at all like what badge you have so like what the story like have his last year's like evil badge so he like went into the venue and the security did it did it kill okay not <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh that's pretty uh, that's pretty crazy but uh another story i have is uh uh t.a wolf i wish he was here for this but uh, but uh, Terry Wolf and his family uh got me this uh gift. It was a uh, it's a like an alcohol that that uh one of the, one of his dad's uh, favorites like alcohol. Forgot the name of it, but uh, it was a cool gift, man. And uh, the funny thing was that that uh, I came like out of the venue, he got me that alcohol. I'm like, oh wait, I cannot bring the drink with me into the venue, so. It was a funny thing. I put the the gift, the alcohol, and uh, one of the, uh, the big like plants inside into the uh, inside of the plants, like and the horse. So I left it there, and uh, surprisingly enough, nobody looked, nobody like saw it. So it was like there like all day. I went back there and I got the alcohol, and I'm like, oh, it's still here, lay like, like all day. <laughs> On Saturday, and I grab it and I put it back in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty funny. Big guy, big guy. I didn't want to like go back to my hotel room. Well, we were staying in the Melee Bay Hotel, but it was, it was like a long walk, so I, I didn't want to go back and forth. So I had to like put it into the uh, plants inside the plants. So that was funny. Mm -hmm. And uh oh yeah, like after the the evil Redpool party, like after like everything was like all done and said, uh myself, the Ikes, and like a lot of people were like standing by the uh the front of the HyperX esports area uh door. Uh we were like well what everyone what everyone was like talking about and like remembering uh Attica, Attica's death and all that. Like a lot of people got emotional. You know, I do miss Attica, man. Kind of what you said here. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks, man. But uh, but uh, we uh, we saw it, and uh, we remember his remember him as a great man, and we yell out, "Joycon boys, Joycon boys, Joycon boys." Actually, they recorded that footage too, so that'd be in my vlog video. If you guys are curious. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, uh, oh yeah, doing, like, doing the, the, uh, the infinite side tournament, like, doing the infinite side tournament, uh, I got in Wicked Axe Mage, the, uh, the Cap Nova player from Soul Cow. Both of them were, were from Soul Cow. And, uh, they were playing that match for qualifying to top eight and for losers. And apparently both of them had, like, a beat, for what I heard. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> 
and I ever the the set I got beat Wicked X Mage like three two, and then man, and then he popped off so hard, man. Like both of them were like talking shit to each other. It was like wild, man. Like they were like talk, they were like saying names to each other, like the most nasty shit you can you can like think of. It was crazy. I would call it that too. Like nobody like expecting that pop off at all, man. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, we always like talk like Easter egg they did at t- at the tech side of top eight. You know, at first, like me and everyone else were like thinking like is they go be in Tekken? but uh, but uh, afterwards they they uh, they told us. Oh hey, it was just a joke. I'm like, oh that sucks, man. Wait, well, anywho. Mhm. Mhm. And uh, I'm not sure if you don't know about this, but uh, during the end of the Street Fighter Five Top Eight commercial break, they played the uh, the the main theme from a vanilla Street Fighter Five and the Struggle They were playing that song, man. That was pretty sick. Yeah, they were like showing, they playing that song and like they were like showing all from uh, Sweet Father Fall and all that. That was pretty sick. Yeah, sounds sick right there. Do you, do you saw like any like footage on that on Twitter, you, YouTube yet? Oh uh, no. I have not. You have not. Oh, that was, it was pretty sick, man. Uh, they played that song like I don't know. And they had like lyrics and scene for like everyone to sing. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, wait, what do you say? Nothing. No. And, uh, oh, yeah, on Monday night, when we were, like, leaving for Michigan, uh, some guy w- were having, w- was carrying, like, a big, like, box of the, uh, the Geeks, uh, Jam, all Street Fighter, uh, box. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about? Those, like, those books that teach you how to, like, play Street Fighter Five and all that. I think so. Uh, let me see like a picture of that of it. It's uh, the guide. Three five five guy is made by Joel Monday. Uh, the oh, guy yeah. who made the, the yeah. subweb subweb it yeah, Street Fighter and yeah. all that. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got uh, yeah, me and like me and my good friend Charlie, we got like two for free. It was pretty sick. It, 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 it was like pretty sick, man. Like the guy like told my friend, Hey, do you want these bugs? They say, Heck yeah. So we got these bucks for free. It's pretty sick. Yeah, definitely sick. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, doing like the Street Fighter Five like top eight, like, you know, like the cameras, they like, they were like walking around the, the crowd, the crowds, and everyone in the back one. Because I was like in the background actually, and I dab, like doing the like cameras when you're doing that. For the audience, it was pretty funny. I like dab, <laughs> but in the background, I was like, I was like, like down into not at the main like shelves by the main floor, but like was by the by there. I was in, I was in the background and I dab. I really hope like somebody got like a screenshot or like or somebody like took a picture of that. I really want to see that, but uh, it's been like almost a week, and uh, I haven't like seen nobody like, I haven't like able to like find it. So yeah, I don't know. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. let's uh, like, are you like, do you have any more at all? Oh no. Uh, I'm like almost done here. I got like a few more to go. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, the lines. I haven't like thought about the lines at. Even this year, right? Because like first day on Friday, the lines were like really long. I don't know why the line was like this long. Like I remember, like last year, the lines wasn't that bad, but uh, this year's lines were, were like really bad cause this year. Apparently, I like, got that like pretty early too. It was like only like 8 a.m. and the line was like too monkeyly like big. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to I forgot to like mention about the after party. Uh, apparently there was well there there was like two like areas, the ground floor and upstairs. So apparently upstairs was only for uh, VIP members only. <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, me and uh, me and, like a lot of people like went upstairs anyways, 
together. And security was kind of level, was kind of wasn't that good for their after party. That they were like there by the stairs, but and like half of the time they weren't. So like me and a lot of people like went upstairs anyways. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. And uh, and and uh, oh yeah, and also yeah, Yikes told me to uh, oh yeah, Yikes like during like Saturday when I talked to him, he told me to, like keep on supporting the the Marvel scene, the community, and keep my eye out. So yeah, that was that was really cool of him to say that man. It keeps me more motivated. Yeah. Doing. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Yeah, it definitely, definitely sounds oh, yeah. awesome. What is it? Uh, yeah, it definitely sounds awesome. Yeah, it was awesome, man. He told me that, you know. It feels, it feels really good, man. Motivated to keep doing this. And uh, for the for most hype moments at EVO, uh, I got like a few, like, a few of them. Uh, grand finals between Snap Tap and Joy D for Marvel 3. That was hype. Uh, shout out to Leo for winning Smash Ultimate. That that one was like insane, man. That loses one. It was it was like we set up the bracket against uh Tweak. And uh Grand Finders. That was pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, it. Sweet fun of what is it? But that was uh pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Street Fighter Five Top Eight, uh, Tech Seven Top Eight, were like really hyped to watch as well. Uh, another like moment from the e Infinite Side Tournament was uh, Marshall making a uh, three two reverse comeback against uh, Nobi Hungry in the Top Eight for Infinite. Uh, Nobi Hungry was was like winning like two all, but uh, Marshall he he was able to do like a three two reverse comeback on him, so that was really hyped to watch. That feed sounds like that. Yeah, actually, we'll call it that. We'll call it that mesh, so you guys will be able to watch that. And, uh, let's see. Dragon Ball Z, the grand finals for that between the Go Goishi against Sonic Fox was hyped too. Mm -hmm. We talk about that. And, uh, my last one is the, uh, the comeback between uh, the Zangief. I forgot his name, the one who made it in the top eight. Uh,. Do you know his name? Uh, Kensuru Mu or something like that? Yeah, him. He, he was playing against uh, Trash Park at the end uh, of Birdie Fight, who has like 700k league points for the Street Fighter Fight leaderboards right now. I don't know, I don't know, how, I don't know, how, he ha I don't know how he has that many league points. But, anyways, both of them played for like top 8 losers qualifiers. And then and the last match for that set was insane. Like, Trashbug was like winning, like obviously, like literally, like the gate player, the gate player has literally, literally had like no life at all, and then he made like the most biggest comeback yet. It was like insane. I do have the video on me. There we go. Like the last match was like insane. Like the gate player was able to do this like crazy comeback. He got like. Two SV, SVDs in a row. And then that uh, trash mark like jump over him, but he got hit by the Lariat, and then he got hit by the EX SVD for the stun. He did a like, combo and the game player won. That was insane. Yeah, it definitely sounded like it. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. And then it was really crazy too. He did, the game player did like a pop up. He, he, uh, he took like the big like donut. <laughs> like a big like donut from like one of the cosplayers uh, the birdie cosplayer just grab it by the stage he like pretending to eat it and yeah. then you see like trash block you, you saw like try you see like trash block and the shell like like not moving out he he didn't move for like five minutes he was like he was just uh, sitting there yeah that, that, that sucks that, definitely anyone that had like a type of combat like that right there would have basically had like you know something like that Basically, anyone that happened like that right there would have basically been like totally defeated right there. One, they were so close to winning right there, and they basically lost because of that. Yeah, exactly, man. That was really crazy, man. Like, man. But uh, oh uh, yeah, I had like one more thing before we go to the other topics. That uh, my older brother Jamie came along with us. He is from Georgia and all that, 
and uh, he was like walking around the uh, the hotel on Friday, and then uh, these like two girls like ask him, "Oh hey, do you know where Shay goes at?" And then and then Joe and then Jamie like told me about him like, "Oh man," uh, he's like, "Yeah," and then we like started laughing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who the two girls were. He said, but uh, that's kind of that's kind of funny. I gotta lie. Yeah. But uh, but uh, that's pretty much it for like all my moments and all that. I guess like final thoughts on Evil 2019 in the whole. This is my second year being there. It was like an amazing experience. Like talking to everyone there, hanging out, playing Marvel. Watching top eights mm-hmm. at the main stage, like etc. etc. Man, it was like amazing experience, man. I would give like a nine point five out of ten for this year's evil, in my opinion. Well, the only like downside was like security can be like a pain in the butt sometimes, but I mean security, security is security, is security. So yeah. But uh, but over it was an amazing experience, man. Yeah. I be I will be definitely going back there next year again for E twenty twenty, man. Can't wait. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, finish off the team area combos topics with the probably the biggest issue of the tournament, which was the numero satro um like uh, assaults that happened at Evo. Mainly in the after time, after parties that happened to it, like as I heard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that, man. Because that's funny. Because like one of my friends, I was like at the at the party because uh, I can I was there actually when that happened, but I didn't saw it. But I saw some like police like walking like, like walking from the the party. I'm like, wait, what's going on? So like one of my friends told me like, oh hey, do you know like somebody like got like kicked out? I'm like, oh, wait, do you know what happened? He's like, he, he doesn't know. Like, nobody knows what happened. And then, like, a couple of days after the event, we all know what happened. Yeah, ba- basically, if we want to know right there, someone basically, uh, like, basically, uh, like, basically groped another person right there. And basically, uh, like, they did not let off on it. And basically, like, had to get security involved to actually do it. Also, um, I heard there was another thing that um, Tong, which was a Marvel vs. Capcom 3 player, basically, uh, uh, like, like, as I they picked up a drink with him, was meant for someone else right there, and he most likely got roofied from it, because he said on Twitter that he uh, basically did not remember everything afterwards after he had that drink. So he, what, he, he got sick afterwards, you said? You know, he got, you know, he got roofied. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ba- basically that was another major issue with it. So that means he basically uh, he like basically got drugged at the thing right there, and that drink was meant for like another girl for what I for what, uh, we know at the moment, but we don't know who it was it for exactly, and obviously it was mm-hmm. it was a messed up thing with it that did it, but obviously he didn't get hurt off it, but obviously he was still technically poisoned because of you know mm-hmm. getting drugged right there for it. Which was huh. very bad right there, and obviously there was. I... Oh, sorry, obviously there was like numerous other things that happened too right there for it, uh, that I don't know much, but those are the, the couple of major things that happened at it, and basically uh, people were very freaking like hating on Evo because of allowing these things to happen in the first place, and obviously they're gonna try to do more stuff in the future for it. But obviously, right there, they, sh- they should definitely do that, man, for sure. It'll keep everything safe next year. Yeah, so ho- hopefully that they uh like, like, like do something to actually fix it right there, or basically make it so that uh, any evidence of like that would be like immediate freaking permit ban from evil or something like that. I didn't, I didn't know about the, that story between uh, Tons and the Amal V player until yeah. like mentioned that. That's actually kind of wired that uh, somebody was trying to like, I guess like poison or like make like one of the girls like sick for that drink. But uh, Tong like thought it was his drink. I don't know. That's, that's kind of messed up, man. Yeah, I go so, like, 
Yeah, you gotta be like very like careful when you like going to these like after parties, you know. Yeah, you should just keep yourself safe, you know. You don't know you don't know who's a you don't know who's good or bad. You know? Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm. That, that right there is the tweet right there to what he says. Basically here's what I said right there. I only had three drinks the last night, but I took a string that was a ten for a woman, a friend of mine, and that the last thing I married all night. Then we get looped. This is such an RK. What the fuck is wrong with people? Oh wow. Oh check- wow, how did I see I had not seen it. This had like ten point two K likes. Holy shit. And I just checked with one of my friends who had super red and she felt something was off and made with bay sitting back to the room. Personally I'm angry disgusted and a bit shook up. It's weird to say I'm glad it happened to be instead of one of my friends. It never felt more powerless that I'm able to speak a name because I don't know tangible proof. I'm more mad that a woman we're gonna have to go through this more than anything else. Okay, that's actually kind of crazy, and I got like, hopefully, like, evil, the evil stuff, like Mr. Wizard, the Cannon Brothers, and, like, everyone else can, like, you know, like, figure out a way how to, like, not to, like, how to, like, you know, like, fix this issue, like, next year when you do, like, another, like, after party, like, these again. Yeah. And, like, official events. Yes, hope, hopefully, like, they do something about this so that. At least the safety of people is a lot better now, but obviously we don't know. So hope- yeah, we don't know for sure, man. So yeah, so obviously it sucks to go but, all. Uh, in. Oh, but uh, but uh, the security by the uh, I forgot to like mention this too, but the security at the eve of venue was like was uh, was pretty good too, and it was like new too. Because I guess they didn't have this like in the previous like evils, but uh, they did this mostly because uh, there was some like there was like that shooting back in like 2017 at the Melee Bay. Yeah. And I think like early this year, some like random like person like tweeted out or like commented like one of the evil like posts saying that uh, he's gonna like shoot up the place, and then uh, Mr. Wizard and like the evil staff like respond to like pretty quickly. And then they got an FBI on that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely, it like, sucks that this happened right here. Yeah, hopefully they'll fix all that by next year and and future evils. Definitely, you know, they cannot fix it all by next year because it will still happen unless something majorly changes that basically prevents. Like people from getting like those types of things to happen in the first place, but obviously, pe- people that obviously still do you know stuff similar to that right there will still do it right there. But obviously, that's gonna be oh yeah, of course, yeah. It's like it's it's a party too, so it's kind of like kind of like hard to like you know check with like everyone mm-hmm. who's doing what you know. Yep. So, yeah, so I think this is a good time to actually probably go out right now. Um, thank you guys for watching this episode of Team Right Here Combos right here. And I mean, we will see you next time. Um, obviously, our guests T Wolf and Psycho Blue are not here at the moment. So it's just going to be just us two signing off. I am Flying mm-hmm. High. I'm Shaco Man, a.k.a. Shaco Media. And thank you for watching and have a nice night.